speaker this morning, our final speaker this morning is uh, Anne Johnson. She is a general nurse, uh, nurse tutor, and formerly lecturer at the School of Nursing and Midwifery and Social Work at the University of Manchester. Uh, she's retired now, and I think this is a very, very special uh, presentation uh, by Anne because Anne suffers from early onset Alzheimer's disease herself, and I think she's going to uh, give us a message of hope uh, and determination about what it's like to, to live with dementia. So, thank you, Anne. Thank you. Bolo Yer Oref. Good morning. Thank you very much for asking me to be with you today. It's a great honour. Thank you very much for that. I was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease when I was 52. That was six years ago, so I'm 58 now. I have the early onset type, which occurs in younger people than one would normally expect. I, we've heard of the figures in Ireland. The figures in the UK at the moment are, with dementia, are 750,000. Of those, 15,000 are under 65. Now, those are the ones diagnosed. A lot out there aren't diagnosed. So if you up those figures, you've got a better idea of the scale in the UK. Now, please, never be scared of the word dementia. It is just a word we use to mean a physical disorder in the brain. And please, Never walk by on the other side. My specific problems are a bit difficult to explain because you can't see them. A lot of my problems relate to visual spatial problems. For example, when you give somebody a coat, you tend to hold it up. Please never do that because I can't work it out. Just give me the coat, please. That would be wonderful. So that's a visual spatial problem. Can't handle that one. Now, it may or may not happen today, I do tend to get stuck for words. And the way around that, if you can't find a word, you use ten others and you get around it in the end. So if you find me rabbiting on, you know I've lost a word. But don't worry, that's fine. Now, I do get lost in the most familiar places. Now, I carry this dog tag with me, so if you find me loitering with intent or otherwise, if you ring this number on this, this luggage label, you'll get me home. So that, to me, Yes, it's humiliating wearing it around my neck every day, but that to me is security. And for 12 sterling pounds a year, that is nothing. So that to me is, is security. Another problem I have is I can't anymore count money. Now, I can tell you it's different shapes and sizes and colours, but I can't anymore put it all together. Another thing is I can't tell the time. I say an ordinary watch. I've got a clock in here you know, with an ordinary hands and what have you, an ordinary watch. So I've gone digital. Now, when I bought this, I wasn't being practical and beaten, so I've gone digital. Now, now, this is fine. Good example here. For half an hour for fine. Now, this, this watch tells me it's 10.34. And because it says 10.34, my brain tells me it's 34 minutes to 10. I know it's not but at least for half an hour all right, okay? The other thing about this watch is it tells me the day and the date, which is very good for the memory test. <laughs> ah, I've got, that's, I've got a response to the memory test, that's wonderful, good. <laughs> in fact, when I said my consultant once, she said to me, and um, what day is it? I said to me, Dr. O'Malley, it's wonder. she'll never do that again, she'll never do that again. Right. Now, so that's, that's, that's the watch. Have difficulty reading again. Now, I'll, I'll come to my strategies later on. Um, now, my short-term memory is bad, and I'll come back later on as well. Now, other things which are now happening to me, which are difficult, I'm now in the stage where I, in the morning, getting up and just getting washed and dressed to me is a major operation. Trying to work out the simple things that we do every day and take for granted is not the case for me anymore, and that is very difficult. Uh, I can't even work out how to make my bed anymore, but, but that's just life for me at the moment. Uh, and to me, frustration is a big problem. And, uh, and it's small things that bring the frustration on for me, and that's when the problems start. Now, I've got strategies to, to help me to deal with things. The first one is my dictaphone. Now, this is a simple, simple device. And the way I use this is, you go to bed at night, you think of things, don't you? 
By the time I've got up, written it down and come back to bed, I've forgotten what I've done. So I, I recall things. It might be something like I taxi come in the morning or go to church or something. So it's on there. The problem is I've got to remember I've used it. It's as simple as that. So my strategy there is by my bed I have a, a radio. So it starts off on there. When it, when it, it goes on the chair at night. So in the morning, if it's on the chair, I've used it. What's on it, I have no idea. So the revelation in the morning when I turn this on, it's quite fun in the morning sometimes, seven messages on there. But it means that it might, might be something simple, but it means I will remember. It's written down as well. So that, to me, is a godsend, a little machine, which to me is a godsend. I wouldn't be without that, which is great. So that's the, um, uh, the memory. Now, reading. I've gone on to audiobooks. If you've never tried an audiobook, please try one. It does depend on your reader, because some readers are boring, can go on forever and never stop. But some readers can bring the book alive. You can fill the book as well if you want to. But they can bring the book alive. But it means I can still enjoy reading and listening to books. And that, that's a bit about the books. I've got a talking clock. Have you ever heard a talking clock? Aren't they awful? Now, the one I've got now... Um, you, you, you sort of bash the top and it says, the time is. Now, I work on a 12-hour clock. She tells me the time of 12-hour clock, but the clock face is 24-hour clock. Fine, but I tend to listen to what she tells me rather than what the, the clock face says. But again, and when the alarm goes, a cock crows, which is rather nice. So that's, that's a talking clock. I haven't yet conquered the the counting money or the numeracy. So if you've got any ideas, please. I must say, I was speaking at Dementia Congress down in Bournemouth, and one gentleman came and said, I've got just, just the way for you counting money. He said, I, I play croquet. Fine. Well, in croquet, you have hoops, don't you? He said, what you've got to do, you've got to put a coin on each hoop, and then you remember which coin it is. <laughs> But the point was, he'd taken the trouble, hadn't he, to come and tell me, which is wonderful, I thought. So I've not, I've not conquered that one yet, but I, I, I maybe, maybe get around that one. Now, my consultant tells me this is all tidy with memory, because as a child, I learned how to read, I learned how to remember things, I learned how to count money. But... I can't remember how to do it, and I suppose I have to put it in some kind of perspective, if you look at it that way. I was asked at a talk I did once, what three things keep me going? My answer was my, my friends, my faith, and doing my talks. A word about friends. Please never underestimate your friends. What you can do for them, what they can do for you. They are so important to you, and please treasure them. They are vital. My faith, I'm practicing in the Church of England, and that will be with me throughout my life. And doing these talks, being with you here today, gives me a purpose for living, so thank you for that. I do live in a care home now, not the one you saw on the, like you saw on the, 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 the chart earlier on. It is... Uh, we were built about two and a half, three, three years ago now. And it is quite different, I think, from, from what you expect to be a nursing home. And there I have the, the care, the safety, and love there. Okay, I'm the youngest person there and always will be. I'm living with 80, 90 year olds, but it's no problem because at the moment I can get out. And that's important to me. When that stops, it might be next week or when I don't know. We've got a problem there, but at the moment, I can get out and that's great, so there's no problem particularly there. I am scared about the future. My father, had, my father had Alzheimer's before me. He was diagnosed, well, they said 57, but in hindsight, it was before that. He lost all his mental and physical abilities, and so looking after him and looking after my own patients as a trained nurse... I know what the future holds for me, and I'm terrified. And that's when the tears start. Very few people have seen those tears. They, they come when I'm on my own news. Oh, my mother's seen those tears. But, but they come, and that is why. But that is life. Uh, and, and I learned to live with that. So 
I leave you with a thought. Please be patient and try and understand the distress and terror I live in every day with Alzheimer's because that's basically what it is. But one thing here, whilst I have dementia, I also have a life to live. And that's very important to remember. So, Gorev Mag Agut. Thank you.